I'm very excited about our next storyteller. Um, you know him from the television show Flash. Uh, my husband is a comic book nerd, uh, but very good looking. And that is a great combination, right? Low self-esteem, but attractive. Get him! Um, This guy's a fantastic actor. He's a dear friend of the Nantucket Film Festival. And yesterday, he wowed everybody in Spencer Sloan's reading of Bob Fisher's My Roommate. Please welcome to the stage, Tom Cavanaugh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, somebody in the front row just said, oh my God, I love him. <laughs> Stop talking so I can start. Um, <laughs> no, you paid clearly. You got reserved for gold, so you're fine. Um, um, fact versus fiction. Fact. You want to ask the girl out. Fiction. She wants you to ask her out. <laughs> I drive a 1991 a two door Toyota Tercel. Um, no power steering, no power brakes, um, roll down windows, no CD player tape deck, um, <clears throat> and no air conditioning. I have driven that car for about the last 25 um, years. I, I live in New York for the last 20 years or so, but <clears throat> back in the early 90s, that car and I had that two-door Tercel with no air conditioning, had a lot of adventures on the baking hot freeways of Los Angeles. Back then, just an actor looking to get a job, surrounded by actor friends looking to get a job. Um, one of them, uh, Michael Ian Black, who told a story so winningly at last year's Storytellers. And one time, he and I, uh, out of work actors, but fortunate enough to get um, tickets to a Lakers game, great, great seats, um, replete with VIP parking. And so I pick him up in my two-door Toyota Tercel. First time he's seen this car, he stands in the corner and <clears throat> appraises it and then gets in and says nothing. And we drive in silence for a while, and then he says... It's great that you drive this. <laughs> and we, we pull into the parking area at the game, and we're dwarfed by Escalades and Navigators. And as we pull up, the security guard spies my little Toyota Tercel, and running, not walking toward us, there's like, you know, his windbreaker with the big block security letters billowing, running toward us going, no, no, no. Um, which is the last words he said because uh, <laughs> we had the parking passes and everything else from there was um, just hand gestures and averted eye contact. Shame. Um, another time I was doing this television show called Scrubs. And, uh, and uh, coming home after a, a late night of work, I pull off the Pico off-ramp and there's a car on fire, just huge flames. And I, I don't know what to do. The heat is so in, intense, even from 40 yards away. It, it's blistering the paint off my aquamarine two-door Toyota Tercel. And um, I, uh, I don't know what to do. I pull off onto Pico, and then there's this cop right there, blissfully unaware. So I say, oh, uh, officer, there's a car on fire on the Pico off-ramp. And he says, I know you, scrubs, <laughs> right? <laughs> My wife loves you. I get that sometimes from the guy. <laughs> My wife loves you. Like, they've evaluated this and realized I pose no threat to their women. <laughs> but he, uh, he's yelling, oh, man, she loves you. You drive that shit? That's so smart. Ain't nobody going to recognize you driving that shit. And I'm like, thanks, also, car on fire. I would put, like, back in the day, I would put miles and miles. I'd put, like, 300 clicks on, I'm Canadian, clicks, kilometers. Thank you. <laughs> Eddie Brill's like, clicks, I got it. Um, 
kilometers on that car, just going to auditions and generals. Um, a word about generals in Hollywood. A general is essentially, this is a, it's not an audition for a specific job, it is a general meeting, the theory being that you will go in the room and be so winning that they will put you in their next movie. In the history of Hollywood, nobody has ever gotten a job <laughs> from a general meeting. They'll tell you, they'll tell you, oh, we're going to put you in the movie. And then you'll tell your agent, they're going to put me in their next movie. They don't put you in their next movie. <laughs> One time, I had a, uh, a general with uh, uh, Jim Henson's company, the Muppets. So great. So I'm driving uh, in the middle of summer, 100 degree day, on the freeway to this, and I get stuck in bumper to bumper traffic, and I start to sweat. Um, and the more I try to stop sweating, I can't stop sweating. And I get to Jim Henson's place. I mean, it's not Jim Henson's place. It's, you, you know, it's, it's the company. It, so I'm there. And, um, you know, I take the seatbelt off, and it's got, you know, the sweat stamp from the seatbelt, and it's just a, a disaster. But I'm early, so I'm like, all right, so I'll just unbutton the thing and, and air dry it on the side view. <laughs> so I do, and now I'm just a guy in a car, naked, from the waist up, sitting there, you know, um, completely creepy. So I think, <laughs> that's no good. So I get outside of my two-door Toyota Aquamarine Tercel, and I'm still no shirt, and it's still air drying there, but I'm kind of leaning against the Tercel like, like Kelly League and Bad News Bears. I'm just like there, and people are walking by, and uh, attractive woman, this attractive woman goes by. You know that thing, she's flanked by two guys. Do you know that thing that you women can do where, to us males, where you can, you can look at us and evaluate us and dismiss and diss us all without changing expression? <laughs> that happens. But it's time to go in, so great. So I put the shirt on. It's still a disaster. It still has the sweatband, so I'm like this. You know, and I go into the company and like, oh, hello. And of course, it's the woman and the two men. <laughs> they did not put me in their next movie. But I did date that girl. <laughs> and here's where, here's where, now there's a thing with storytelling where you're supposed to tell the truth. I would love to say that I like somehow managed to ask her out right then. That didn't happen. It was a chance encounter at the Farmer's market. I don't want to break the casino. Oh, by the way, not a casino. Um, I don't want to break the <laughs> casino ode that, you know, you got to tell the truth. So chance encounter at the farmer's market in L.A., and I ask her out, and somehow, for some reason, she says yes to this creepy guy. But I still remember there was this glimmer of fear <laughs> in her eyes, but she said yes. And so I go, and I pick her up in the two-door Toyota Tercel. Now, she's seen the car before, but I'll never forget the wave of disappointment in her face as I, as I pull up. You know, she looks great, by the way. She's wearing like a pink button-down sweater and white pants. And we go out to dinner. It's a disaster. It's a complete disaster. It's essentially a series of me lobbing her questions and her responding with one-word answers. Yes, no, Michigan. <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and then we go to a movie, which I don't know why, because I'm young and dumb, and I, you go to a dinner and a movie, it's stupid. I can feel her just counting the minutes as the movie progresses, and we have to leave, which we do, and we go out at like 12.30 in the morning to the parking lot to the Toyota Tercel, which doesn't start. <laughs> now, a better man than me would simply call AAA if that person was a member of AAA. <laughs> and if that person was not, then they would go through a Rolodex in their mind of their friends and figure out who to call. Guys don't give up easily on women, even when there's nothing there. And so I haven't given up on this woman, even though it's a, clearly a disaster. And so probably not the best guy to call would be the most handsome, charismatic of my friends, Kev. But he's also, damn it, the most dependable. So I call him, and the woman and I sit in stony silence. 
for what feels like only minutes before Kev comes blasting into the parking lot in his fucking Mustang <laughs> convertible and uh, with Tom Petty's breakdown blaring <laughs> and he pulls up to the thing and Kev is the kind of guy that can somehow address a together woman of the 90s as doll and get away with it and he just hops out of, he hops out of the Mustang and he's like car trouble doll and pulls out like a thermos of uh, hot chocolate and proceeds to pour it and boom puts the cup on the dash for the for the woman and goes around the car and he's like telling jokes and she's loving it and it's great and boom he gets the car started and I'll never forget his last words he heads out and he's like doll all the best he literally says all the best as he's pulling away. Break breakdown, go ahead. And I mumble something like, you know, I'm supposed to let it run for 15 minutes <clears throat> or something like that. And, um, but I turn to her and uh, something has changed in her expression. Like maybe this guy has these cool friends so he's not such an idiot, you know? And, um, so I smile at her, and she smiles back at me. And it's the first time I've seen this woman smile, and it's a beautiful smile. And she seems to lean forward imperceptibly, and so I lean forward, and is, is this going to happen? And our lips part, and she says, is Kev single? And being an actor, I say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's real shame, you know, it's like real shame. And I look and I see her, like her, her white pants and the hot chocolate sitting on the dash and me and that two-door Tercel gun it <laughs> out of the parking lot and she... It's a disaster to this day. I have still never been in a Muppet movie. But um, 367,000 clicks later, I still drive that car. I love that you still drive that car. Tom Cavanaugh, everybody.